Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'll be showing you how to create a weather app using React. In the previous video, we built a weather app using Python, but this time we will be using React, which is a JavaScript front-end framework. This app will have an input form on the web page where we can enter in a city, and by just entering in the city, it will give us the weather details for that city. The weather details will include the temperature and the actual weather in that city, and we're going to be using the Open Weather Map API, which is where we'll get our weather data from, and this is also the same API we used in the previous video, and we're also going to use some CSS on top of React to make it more aesthetically pleasing. So with that being said, let's start. Okay, so first of all, we'll need to create an Open Weather Map account since that will give us access to their API. So I've opened up my browser and went to openweathermap.org forward slash API. And what you're going to need to do is press this sign up link right here, and this will lead you to a sign up page. Now, if you've watched the previous video, you probably already have an account, so you'll just need to log in. But if you don't have an account, you'll just need to fill out this form. And once you do that, it'll log you in. So once your account has been created and you're logged in, you'll be redirected to home.openweathermap.org and a page that looks like this. And here we're just going to press this API keys link and you will find your API key on this page. And this API key will be used to fetch the weather data. So I'm just going to copy my API key. And now that we have our API key and have created an open weather map account, we're ready to set up our project and start building it. Now to set up our project, we'll first need to create it. So I've opened up VS Code inside of this YouTube directory right here, and I'm going to run npx create react app weather app inside the terminal. And this will just create the app for us. And since this process will take a while, I'm just going to speed up the video. All right, so now that our project's been created, I'm just going to start off by removing some boilerplate code. So I'm just gonna go inside source and then go inside app.css and just remove all of this. And I'm also going to remove the code inside app.js and replace it with the RFCE snippet and so that we get a functional component. All right, so now that we have our boilerplate code removed and have our app component, we can finally start and I've also cleared my terminal to make it easier. So first off, I'm going to need a way to store our API key. So to do this, we're going to create a variable called API key by doing const API key. And this will be equal to the API key, which is going to be stored as a string. Okay. And next, I'm going to import use state. And if you don't know what use state is, I have a tutorial on it, and it'll be on the top right of this video. And we're basically going to be using this use state hook to create a state variable which will contain our weather data. So basically once we fetch the API and get the weather data, we'll store that data inside of a state variable and that same state variable can be used to display that data as well. So to create the state variable, I'm gonna do const weather data and set weather data. And this will be equal to use state, okay? And now that we have this set up, we can start adding a input form and also add some CSS to it to make it look better and also start up our app. All right, so let's start. So first of all, I have my editor on my right and my browser on the left, okay? And before we start up our app, I'm going to import this app.css. So to do that, I'm just gonna do import and then app.css. And I'm going to cd into this weather app directory. So I'm just gonna do cd weather app and then do npm start to start up our app. And give it a couple of seconds and it will start up on localhost app port 3000. All right, and while it's doing that, I'm going to give this div a class name of container. So I'm just gonna do class name container. And inside of our app.css, I'm going to do dot container to access this container class. And I'm going to give the container a display of flex. So display flex and then give it a padding of 25 pixels so it has some space. All right, and for the input box, or actually let's create the input box. So to create the input box, we're gonna do input, and I'm gonna give it a class name of input, and I'll have a placeholder of enter city, all right, with three dots. All right, and now we have our input, so you can see it right here. And for the input box, I'm going to give it a padding of 10 pixels so it has some space inside like this and I'm going to give it a width of 80% right here, and I'm going to give it a margin of auto so that I can auto align with the page. So now we have our input box on the front end, and I'm going to change the border color of this input box. So I'm gonna change the border to um, border one pixel solid light blue. All right, so that it looks nicer like this. 
And I'm also going to give it a border radius so it looks a little rounded by doing border hyphen radius of about six pixels. All right, and I'm gonna give it more padding actually. Let's say we give it about 15, 15 pixels of padding and let's give the font size a little bit larger. So I'm gonna do font size of um, 16 pixels. All right, so that it looks like this. And I don't like this outline, so to get rid of this outline, we're just gonna do dot input, and on focus, we're gonna do outline of none. Okay, so it looks cleaner like this. So now that we have our input set up, we're gonna get ready to create the um, actual function on getting the weather data. And one more thing I forgot to mention is I'm going to put a flex direction of column so that whenever we have the weather data over here, um, the input form is right on top of it, okay? And I'm also going to put justify content of center so that everything is aligned in the center as well as align items center, okay? And now we can move on to creating the function where once we enter in a city, it'll fetch the weather data for that city and then display it. All right, so I've made my editor larger and what I'm gonna do next is create another state variable called city by doing const city set city. And this will be equal to use state with an initial state of an empty string, okay? And this variable called city will basically be equal to the city that we enter into this input form. So for example, let's say that we enter in Houston, Houston will be equal to this city variable right here, all right? Or the city variable will be equal to Houston. And we can pass on the same city variable to the fetch URL and use this variable to fetch the API and get the specific weather data for that city. So next we just need to build the feature to get the weather data. So I'm just going to write down some code and I'll explain to you guys what it means. So I'm gonna do const get weather. All right, and this will have an event and then I'm going to do if event.key is equal to enter, then we're going to fetch it. So we're going to do fetch. All right, and I'm just going to paste this URL in. And this is basically the fetch URL for getting the weather data. So for the weather, we're going to get the weather of city over here. And the unit is in imperial. So if you want to get the metric unit for the weather, you can pass in metric over here. And the app ID is e equal to this API key. So we're going to fetch this URL and I'm going to do, well, once we fetch the URL dot then we're going to get the response and then get that response in JSON. Then whatever data is inside that JSON. So then data, we're going to do set weather data to that data. Okay. So right here we have built the get weather function. And now all we need to do is just add it onto this input form. So right now I'm just going to create a new line for these so that this is a bit more readable. Okay. And then on change, we're going to do E and then set E to um, set city to E dot target value. So whatever we enter in will be equal to the city. Okay. And then I'm going to do the value of this to the city. All right. And then on key press we're gonna do this get weather okay so if we enter in something let's refresh the page let's say I enter in Houston and then open up the network pane so if I do reload and then enter in Houston you can see that it sent a get request to the open weather map API all right, so now that we have the weather data displayed, this basically means that our app is doing its job like it's supposed to. We're entering in a city and it's fetching the API for the weather data and setting that data to this weather data variable. So next, all we have left to do is to display this weather data. But before we do that, I want to recap what we've done here in case you didn't understand. And I'm mainly going to discuss this input form right here. So basically we've created this input form and this city state variable. And what this on change is doing is that it's setting the value of this input field to the city variable. So for example, if we type in Dallas, the value of this city variable will be equal to Dallas, right? And this value right here is just binding the city variable with the input field. 
and this on key press will just call this get weather function that you see here. And this get weather function will take in an event. And if the key is equal to enter, meaning that we're trying to get the weather of the city that we just entered in, it'll call this API and get the weather data. So for example, if I type in Dallas again and hit enter, you can see that it has the weather data for Dallas right here. So that's basically it. And I'm also going to put uh, set city to an empty string right after we get the data. So for example, if we type in something else, so let's say uh, we're trying to get the weather of New York, right? We're going to reset it back to an empty input field in case we want to type something again. All right, so now with that out of the way, we can finally move on to actually displaying the weather data. And I've closed out the network pane and I'm also going to put my editor into full screen mode so that you guys can see the code better. And to get started, I'm just going to write down some code and I'll explain along the way what it means. So I'm, I'm first going to do if type of weather data dot main is equal to undefined, and that is true, then we're going to display a welcome message. And then enter in, in a city to get the weather of. Okay, so what does this mean? So if the weather data is equal to undefined, which in most cases will mean that we haven't searched up a city or we don't have the weather data yet, we're just going to display this welcome message. Otherwise, meaning that we do have the weather data, we're just going to display the weather data. So I'm gonna create a div tag. And inside of this div, I'm going to create three P tags, okay? And you'll understand why we need three. So one of these P tags will be to display the city that, we, that we're getting the weather of. The second p tag will be to display the temperature, and the third p tag will be to display the actual weather. So if it's raining outside, it's going to display raining. Okay, so in the first p tag, in order to display the name, we're just going to do weather data dot name. And in the second p tag, to display the temperature, I'm first going to do math dot round, and then weather data dot main dot temp. And I'm going to put the Fahrenheit symbol since we're getting this weather in Fahrenheit. If you're getting it in Celsius, you're going to put Celsius. Okay. And in the third P tag, I'm going to put the actual uh, weather outside. So to get this, uh, we're going to do weather data dot weather and then access the first index and then get main. Okay. And what this math dot round is for is basically this. So if we get our weather in uh, with a decimal value, this math.round will basically round that decimal value to a whole number, okay? So if we go back to our app and see it, you can see that we're greeted with this welcome message over here. And the reason that we're greeted with this is because weather data is equal to undefined. And it's equal to undefined since we haven't searched anything up yet. So it just says welcome to weather app, enter in a city to get the weather up. So if I enter in Houston, you can see that it brought up Houston's weather. So it has Houston's name over here and then the temperature in Houston, which is 88 degrees Fahrenheit, and the actual weather, which is clear. So now that we have gotten the weather data and displayed it, uh, what we need to do next is just add some styling to make it look nicer. All right, so to get started with styling, I'm just going to maximize my editor first. And next, what I'm going to do is give a class name to this outer div and give class names to these p tags over here. So for this outer div, what I'm going to do is give it a class name of weather hyphen data. And this first p tag, I'm going to give it a class name of city. The second p tag, which is the temperature, I'm going to give it a class name of temp. And this third p tag, which is the actual weather, I'm just going to give it a class name of weather. And now that we have this done, we can start actually writing down the CSS. All right, so to get started with styling, I'm just going to move my window to the right. And on the left, you can see that we have the search bar with the weather data. And what we're going to do first is separate the weather data from the search bar. So to do that, I'm just gonna do dot weather data to access this weather data class you see here. And I'm going to give it a margin top of 100 pixels. So now it's separated from the search bar. And I'm going to give it a display of flex with a flex direction of column so that they're stacked up on top of each other like this. And I'm going to give it an align items of center so that they're centered, all right? And next, what we're going to do is increase the font size of the city 
So to do that, I'm just going to access the city by doing dot city, and I'm going to give it a font size of 30 pixels, and I'm going to uh, make 200 the font weight so that it looks thinner like this. And then for the temperature, I'm just going to give it a font size of 90 pixels and give it a padding of 10 pixels. And I'm going to give it a border of one pixel solid with light gray. So that it looks like this. And I'm also going to give it a border radius so it looks rounded. And to do that, I'm just going to do border hyphen radius. And I'm going to give it a border radius of 12 pixels. And then lastly, for the uh, weather, I'm just going to do dot weather font size of 30 pixels and I'm going to give it a font weight of 200. All right, so this is basically it. This is our app. We have the city displayed here, the temperature displayed here, and the weather displayed here. So right now you can see the weather for Houston. If I want to see the weather for Dallas, I can just search Dallas and you can see that we have the weather details for Dallas. And if we want to see the weather details for New York, you can see that we have the weather details for New York. If we want to see it for Sacramento, for example, we can see the weather details for Sacramento. All right, so now that we have all this done, we've basically completed making this app, but we have one last thing to do, and that is error handling. So if I hit enter, you can see that it brings me back to this welcome message, and that's because when you hit enter, it'll clear out the weather data, so this is working like it's supposed to. But if we enter in a city that doesn't exist, so I'll just type in a bunch of letters, you can see that it remains the same. And what we need to do is display a message stating that the city doesn't exist. So to do this, we're just going to head on over into our app.js file. And below this code right here, I'm going to um, write some code down and I'll explain what it means. So if weather data dot COD, which is the status code that the API returns once something has been searched, is equal to 404, meaning that the city was not found or the resource was not found, we're just going to display city not found. Otherwise, we're going to leave it empty by just having these tags over here. So if I type in a random city, so I'm just going to hit enter to clear everything. And if I just type in a uh, random letters over here, it says city not found. But if I type in a genuine city, so if I type in Houston, you can see that it shows the weather for Houston. And if I type in something random, you can see that it says city not found. Okay, so now we're 100% complete with this app. And just to recap what we did in this video, we signed up for an open weather map account to get access to an API key, which is used for getting weather data. And then we created this React project and added this input form to get weather data for the city that we enter in using the open weather map API, and then display the weather data and also added some error handling in case we search for an invalid city. So with that being said, I hope you found this video informative. And if you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more videos like this and have a nice day.